So take us through the daily life of a, perhaps a field worker on a, a plantation. Uh, she got up in the morning, she nursed her child, and then she went out into the field and didn't get back? Well, she nursed her child and maybe she took the child with her and, and, and put the child down at the end of a row that she was sewing and kept moving them on very large plantations. And we do know that there are not a lot of large plantations where you have more than uh, 20 or 30 slaves. I mean, most planters owned um, two or three or four or five. Yeah. So our idea of you know these huge plantations with large labor forces uh, is, is the thing of myth. All right, but uh, on some of these plantations, there might have been an elderly woman who was um, beyond the age where she could actually work in the fields and she would be charged with taking care of the child. On some plantations, the, the, um, the mistress, the white woman who was in the house, the, she would run a nursery for um, uh, enslaved children. But children are also put to work very, very early. So even if it's just weeding, you, can, you, could, you could see a four or five year old child out in the fields doing some kind of work. Working with the farm animals, picking up eggs, uh, feeding chickens. Uh, they are prepared for a life of labor very early. And the, the women who work in the household, I assume a good proportion worked you know, within either the plantation home or even in the semi-urban home as mm -hmm. women who did everything within the home? And, and the they home. would do everything, but, and there is a myth. There is this myth that, you know, house slaves had it so much better than field slaves. And even within African American history, there is, a, there is a, this mythology that, well, some people who were um, house slaves, and that's a nice way of putting it, um, that somehow that they had it a whole lot easier than field slaves. Uh, feel slaves being more flat-footed, say, for example, than those who worked in the home. The fact of the matter is, women who worked in the house were far more susceptible to being raped. They were far more um, um, available, quote unquote, to the master and also to the violence of the mistress. You know, white women who were in the plantation, uh, they, they were not allies with the black women who, who worked in their home. They were invested in having that woman do a particular kind of work and do it well and do it properly, if only so that they didn't have to do it. Is there any way that uh, such, a, uh, such a woman, an uh, enslaved woman, could resist that violence? Um, I think that the kind of resistance that enslaved women um, resorted to was often not perceived as resistance. So, for example, one could do one's work poorly and so, and, and somehow get out of doing that work. So, uh, for example, if you, uh, if you really were angry about having to cook a meal, so you could burn it. And then, you know, you might get whipped for it. On the other hand, you could play like, well, I just didn't know, you could play ignorance. Unfortunately, that reinforces the notion that black people are ignorant and they don't know what, what they can do. But there really isn't uh, too much that an enslaved woman can do. Now, there are instances, and we've We've read about them. They exist in in the record of black women fighting their mistresses. And we could also characterize the plantation household as being one where it was a perpetual war going on and a war of wills mm -hmm. between white women and enslaved women. Um, but it would be beneath the surface. Mm 